This is Kyle Anderson with WRGW News. I am interviewing Dr. Ron Paul today. He's just given a speech at the George Washington University, and I'm going to ask him a couple questions about the speech. Thank you very much for being with us, Dr. Paul. Thank you. Good to be with you. Um, so at the very beginning of your speech, you talked about that we need a revolution. I was wondering, who do you think is going to be like the main catalyst to lead this revolution, and what, ty like, what form will do you th perceive it to take? I think it's going to be a generational thing. I don't think it's going to be one individual because I see it as ideological. And it's to me, it's a generational thing of people probably between the age of 15 and 30. And uh, there's a large number of individuals that care about this or study and understanding it. But there will be leaders that will pop up. There's several in the Congress and the Senate now, and there's a lot of people around the country. But the real leaders are the academicians, the people who know and understand foreign policy as well as economic policy. In your speech, you had also talked about how some of your greatest heroes were economists. I was wondering, what made you gain such uh, respect for economists? You know, it's interesting. It, um, I just had come across what we call the Austrian School of Economics, you know, free markets, and it fascinated me. And they made some projections in the 1960s that uh, this Bretton Woods uh, monetary system wouldn't work. And that was a pseudo gold standard established after World War II. And sure enough, uh, it didn't work. It broke down on August 15, 1971. And that was really like an eye opener for me. Boy, these, these guys were really right on this. So I kept studying and studying and then started speaking out on the monetary issues in the 70s. And that led to me being elected to Congress. That's very fascinating. Um, I was also wanting to reference um, another influence in your life. You had served in the military early on. I was wondering, how has that influenced you overall as a person and also in the sense of what, what can we do to help our soldiers when they come back home from war? Well, the best thing we could do is to prevent the disease. I believed in preventative medicine. So not going to war would be the greatest godsend for it because uh, there would be so many less tragedies. But obviously you have a real question. And that's where we fall short. As a physician and a congressman, I saw that. These troops come home and they don't always get the medical care that they need. And that's why, um, you know, they lead to so much trouble. They get depressed. There's guilt involved in this. They don't know exactly why they're over there. And then tragically, medicine hasn't helped. And some of these problems are iatrogenic. That means the doctor contributes to the disease by giving them these uh, psychotropic drugs. And some of these people get worse on them. Uh, and some of the uh, individuals in school that commit violence are on these drugs that instead of calming people, it does exactly the opposite. So it's better uh, better management. Uh, I'm very, very frugal, but I really believe that we have a moral responsibility after dragging these individuals over there and sending them off to war that shouldn't have been that we take care of them. But it's a major problem. It's, it's going into the trillions of dollars because some of these individuals, uh, it's, it's sort of a, a mixed irony that less were killed in these, these wars because they had more protective uh, equipment. But then there's more tragedies afterwards. And this is going to go on for years and years. And uh, so I, and the real challenge will be is uh, when we have an economic crisis and we don't have the money, but uh, it's already there being mistreated. So all I can do is talk about it and try to encourage it. And I guess if you look at my voting record, probably the only uh, individual budget that I ever voted for was uh, for veterans. Thank you very much. That's very fascinating. Um, I did have another question concerning your opinion on truth, making truth more evident to the public. Um, in a recent interview in Esquire magazine, the um, Navy SEAL who was credited as shooting Osama bin Laden spoke out about how he was denied health care after he left the SEALs. As far as speaking about private missions, do you think there's a certain point where they should be kept private to protect the soldiers who are currently overseas or, and the American people as well? Yeah, it's a tough decision because when you release some of that information, you practice civil disobedience and uh, you have to realize that there can be punishments. But, you know, Martin Luther King spoke out and when there was abuse and practiced civil disobedience uh, and whistleblowers do the same thing. Uh, so when they do that, some of the CIA agents and some of the people in the military, and I talked a little bit about that in the speech, that uh, they have to weigh that because there are times, I mean, if, if you're in a, a, a war, 
that has been a, a much more legitimate war and you have secrets, I mean, it could be very, very harmful. Um, but uh, that is a very, very personal decision and they have to weigh the so-called benefits by releasing the truth. But if the individual is totally convinced that the nation's been lied to and that the killing and the dying is a consequence of bad policy based on lies, then they feel strongly enough to have a moral responsibility to, to t tell the country what's going on. So. I admire people like that if it's sincerely uh, motivated, and I know that, uh, quite frankly, it would be real tough for me to uh, know what to do under those circumstances, but uh, some of them do and have served the country well. One last question that I'd like to ask you is, if there's one thing that you think that everyone in that auditorium could have taken away from your speech this, after, or this evening, what would that be, and what would you hope that it would do to influence the next generation? I would hope that they realize what they have already suspected, that this country is messed up and there are deep problems. And I gave them a hint on what the answer is, and it's, it, the hint is that you look toward the understanding of personal liberty and you can bring people together, whether you're a left-wing Democrat or a right-wing Republican, to come up with solutions. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Paul. We appreciate it.